Do you struggle to get your musical ideas recorded quickly? Are you interested in finding some more workflow tips for Logic? In this video, I'm gonna show you one of the best ways to improve your speed while you're making music. Hello, my name is Maddie. I'm your maestro of music production, a professional music producer that's here to unveil some of the secrets about Logic Pro and how to make music well. I make videos like this every week, so if you're interested in joining the community, hit the subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you a part of the team. Today's video topic is going to be about creating templates in Logic. A template in Logic is anything that's predetermined to help you save time. There can be templates for vocals, there can be templates for mixing, for mastering, for drums, you name it, there is a template out there for it. Think of it as a preset. The templates we're going to be talking about today are going to be whole project templates. These templates will help save you time and they'll help you make music faster. Instead of starting with a blank Logic workspace, templates allow you to already add some of the parameters that you might add anyways. You can add your favorite instruments to the template so that you don't have to add them manually later. This might save 10 seconds, 20 seconds here in there, but those small changes can add up to big time savers overall. And really the biggest benefit of these templates is reducing the time it takes for an idea in your head to go into the computer. I'm going to divide this video into three sections. First, I'll talk about templates and why they're important and why you should use them. Second, I'll show you how to create your own templates in Logic. And third, I'll show you the template that I use the most often and the parameters I've chosen and why. That template will be available for free if you want to follow along as a download from my website. You can check that out in the description below. Well, let's start into the first section. Why should you use templates and why are they important? Templates are not a necessity when it comes to music production, but they can make streamlining the process that much easier. Templates are also really great at organizing your thoughts and ideas and projects. Templates are great because they help organize your thoughts and ideas and they help pre-select some of the instruments so you don't have to worry about choosing them later. Many times these templates are great starting points. Sometimes starting with a complete blank slate can lead to frustration, but having some instruments that you are familiar with and that you've used before can help inspire your creativity right off the bat. As I stated before, these sound like small shavings of time, but when you add them up into hours and hours of a project, suddenly you found yourself saving 30 minutes. That can be a pretty impactful thing when you're dealing with clients, when you're making your own music. The whole idea of templates is to get past those bad ideas quickly so that you can get to the music that you care about and music that sounds great. Now that you know a little bit more about templates, let me hop in and show you how to make your own. This is gonna be very customizable and very personal personalized to what you need. If you're working in electronic music, maybe you include electronic sounds and some synths and some drums. If you're working in trap or hip hop, maybe you include some trap or hip hop drums. I'm going to show you some basic instruments and what you might want to use them for, show you some basic setup and routing, how to color them, and so on. Then I'll show you how to save it after we're done. But let's hop in. Here I've opened a new Logic document and included one software instrument. The first software instrument and the default software instrument of Logic is the classic electric piano. Now for me, the classic electric piano is really great at just getting my MIDI ideas down from my piano right here and onto my computer. I really do like keeping the electric piano involved, but there's also another instrument I like to have in my templates. So I'm going to duplicate it by clicking this button here. I'll open up my library by pressing Y, and I'm gonna find a Steinway Grand Piano. This is my favorite grand piano in Logic, and it's one that I frequently use if I'm trying to lay down a track, lay down demos, you name it. This is my go-to piano. Something I also add a lot to my tracks is an audio file. So I'm gonna go here, click Audio, Create, and bada bang, there you go. Now, for this audio file, I'm gonna name it Guitar so that I know it's a guitar. And I also can change the icon here by right clicking, finding guitar, and clicking on one of the guitars. Now I have the guitar track ready to go. For my guitar, my input will be input one, so I'm gonna leave that as is. What's great about templates is I can preload plugins to help me so that if I have a guitar idea, I don't have to worry about amp selection. Because of that, I'm gonna put on an amp already so we don't have to do this later. Let's go into amps and pedals. We'll go into Amp Designer. One of my favorite presets in Logic is the 
silver dollar, which is the preset that emulates the Logic or the Fender Reverb amp. This is a very clean sound and it works really well with my Strat that I use to record with most often for my electric guitar. S sweet, so now when we open up the project, we'll have a piano, we'll have an electric piano and a guitar ready to go. There's another thing that I use in almost all of my songs and it is vocals. I'm gonna add another audio track to help me out with that. In my personal recording chain, vocals come in on input two. So I'm gonna change that to input two so I don't have to do that later. I'll name this vocals and I'll change this custom thing to a vocal guy. Now I can see visually, it's pretty uncommon for me to have one single vocal in a song, but it's not uncommon for me to have four, eight, 16 vocals. I'm gonna make four tracks of these vocals and show you that it's easily bust by creating a summing track right here. Now that we have a summing track, we can just name this vocal bus, and now we can affect all of the vocals at once by this bus. Anything that we put on this bus will affect all of these vocals instead of just affecting one track at a time. I highly encourage you to work in this bus workflow because when it comes to mixing and it comes to mastering, these are gonna save you so much time Rather than affecting each track individually, you can affect groups of tracks that are similar and save you a ton of time. It doesn't give you quite as much flexibility in terms of sound design with each individual track, but it's gonna save you so much time in the long run, trust me. So now we have a vocal bus, we have guitar. That, that looks pretty good to me. I might add, wanna add one more thing, maybe some drums. So I'm gonna go to software instrument. I'm gonna click on electronic drum kit. And one that I've liked recently is Dumbao. Okay, or I always say Dembo because I've learned it like that, but it's definitely Dembo. So Dembo, so now we have our drums, we have everything we need. Now what I would do is I'm going to color code them so that I can visually see what's going on. I like to color code them like this. Click Alt C to open up your color wheel. And now I always put my drums as red because I think of them as the very top of my mix or the very bottom sort of of the base. That's just what I use. You can use whatever colors you want. For my pianos, I always like to do green because that is the default color of MIDI tracks in Logic. These haven't changed because they have an actual picture there instead of a PNG fillable color icon. So don't worry about them not changing. When you record, that's when you'll see the actual colors. Guitar, I always like to do guitar as blue, which is the default setting for any audio track. So that makes it easy. And then we're gonna click on our vocals and I like to make them purple because that's the color I chose. So now we have a quick, we have a colorful thing and we're ready to lay down an idea if we want to. To save this template, we can go to file, save as template. We can name it what we want, Maddie's template example and bang, there we go. As you can see, I already have another template saved here, which is the one that I'm gonna talk about now. These high, these templates are very customizable and they're very specific to what you want to do. But let me show you one that I use pretty frequently that helps me get my ideas out quick. We're gonna go to my templates and Maddie template 1.0. Now we have loaded in all of the template that I've made. As you can see here, I've color coded everything to the max. I've got bass, I've got drums, I've got synths, I've got guitars and vocals. They're all going to the bus, just like I showed you before. That way I can turn all the guitars down at once. I can make mixing decisions for all the guitars, all the pianos, all of the drums without having to go into my individual tracks and doing it. There's one more advanced feature that if you want to include on your templates, I would recommend as well. And that tip would be to have one reverb that you can use on all of your project. I happen to have two, one for an ambiance and two for the main reverb, but I'll show you the power of that. If I go to my vocals bus, you can see bus 10 and bus 11. These are both sends, so the more I add, the more reverb will be added to those buses. What's cool about using the same reverb, as you can see these are all bus 10 and 11, is that it puts it in a similar space to the other instruments. If you were listening to a band in real life, the reverb would all be the same from the drummer, from the bassist, from the guitarist, because you're in the same room. Doing this in a studio setting helps glue those sounds together a little bit better. And it's something I do on all of my tracks. Also, I have a delay bus that I can add in on anything I like. I don't like to put it on too many things right away, but if I ever want to, I can go to my main delay, click it, add it, mix it to taste, and there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna spend the next eight minutes working on a track and laying something down really quickly to show you what's possible 
if you have the template and if you know the sounds in it really well. This is a great way of getting ideas down and the workflow is really fast. So just, I'll set a timer for eight minutes and then I'll fast forward through it after I do and I'll show you the results. So I've completed the song. It took me a little bit to get started, but I was around eight minutes and I just laid down a quick idea, scattered some vocals through, improvised some lyrics, but here you go. Here's the idea. Oh, I want you, baby, badly. Using these templates can save you so much time. I would encourage you to make your own. If you're still new to music production and some of these concepts that I was talking about confused you, please ask me in the comments below and I'd be happy to help. It'd also be really helpful if you were to download this template for free from my website so you can see some of the concepts that I was talking about and what I did to get there. And maybe you can just use my concept as an adjustment for your own. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Maddie, your maestro of music production. I'll see you in the next one next week. Peace.